So anyway, it's the morning of the annual general meeting, the Saturday day part of the annual general meeting in Detroit in 2004, and went standing up in front of these people and saying, you know, let's talk about the elephant in the room, the cancellation of the other conference, and uh, or at least the other theme, which was to have been about America. Well, what was said next was that promises were made that the space would be created for an actual discussion of these questions. And uh, statements were made by people who had been involved in the decision, um, uh, people representing the America program, for example, that they were okay with it. And I didn't particularly believe that. But one of the things that you can have happen in the Anthroposophical Society is people run <coughs> everywhere but toward anything controversial. They run away from it. But if they can find a way to avoid it, they will. And Anyway, so there we are, and the annual general meeting goes on, and it uh, basically contained, um, interestingly enough, not anything about America, but uh, rather... Uh, Pretty much a lot of Steiner said, and in addition to that, there were three women there. I'm not going to name names. They know who they were, <coughs> who had some affection for a <coughs> European anthroposophist, Rene Corrido, who had worked in America for some time. And I'm not saying anything bad about Rene Corrido. He was pretty dynamic. You know, he was a human being, of course. You know, just like all of us. I'm a human being too. We get, we screw things up. He wasn't by any means perfect, but the three women that I'm thinking about proceeded to take us down memory lane during the course of the rest of the annual general meeting with their remembrances of Re Rene Corrido. So here we are, we're having a conference, okay, that was originally going to be about America. It gets axed, it's because somebody didn't like somebody, who was going to speak, and then uh, there's an election the Tuesday before the weekend that the annual general meeting is had, in which Bush is re-elected, and of course there are a lot of people very much involved in that, certainly my partner, who I described, you know, had worked for the Kerry campaign in, in uh, Prescott, Arizona. In fact, when they put her in charge, they paid her money, you know, not a lot, but she was only working 150 hours a week or something like that in the last couple of weeks of the campaign. But anyway, so there we are at this conference that's supposed to be about America, and instead of being about America, we're having all this uh, honoring, which is not a bad thing. It's, you know, not a bad thing to honor a, a, a Rene, who had crossed over into the spiritual world and uh, had been a big influence on a lot of people, and I think these three women uh, had been influenced by him and thought a lot of him. And of course, it's kind of a total reversal of the situation that had been planned, that is the discussion of America, to take a, a leading anthroposophist in America who is basically a European, and I've written about the problems that come from Europeans thinking they understand Americans, and of course that's a whole other subject that can get one really confused because there's a lot of, of ignorance there, okay? A lot of ignorance about the relationship between America and <coughs> American souls and European souls and the activity in the Anthroposophical Society in America. But anyway, we go through and, you know, the, the conference is, is, is basically just about over and finally they get to the thing that they call the final plenum, which is the first time in these, these things that the Anthroposophists put on in America where the audience actually gets to say something. The rest of the time, the audience has to be passive and receive what the leaders think they should get to say. And we had, you know, Steiner said and Rene Rene all weekend, and the, in the midst of this election and that had just happened and the cancellation, and in the final plenum, this woman speaks. And I didn't know who she was. She looked to me like she was either a young Waldorf teacher, and by young I mean, you know, late 20s, early 30s, or perhaps a Waldorf mother, you know, there's a certain style of dress, and of course it doesn't mean that my perception was correct, but she just said in this most plaintive voice, 
And the basic idea, I don't have the exact words of it, but was, doesn't anthroposophy have anything to say about America? And it wasn't just the words, it was the tone of voice. Obviously, she had felt something deeply about the election that just passed. We just had the annual general meeting in the Anthroposophical Society in America, and not one word directed all these American souls to contemplate what was going on in America with the election of Bush for a second term. Now think about that. There's powerful forces there at work that keep the Anthroposophical Society from talking about America. Powerful forces. These forces do not want American anthroposophists to talk about America, to understand their own soul life and their own country. And the reason for this is pretty straightforward in a certain sense. And I'm going to get into a little more detail on this as we go forward. <coughs> but the fact was, and the fact remains, in spite of people wishing it was otherwise and there being other theories among anthroposophists in the world about all this stuff, the fact was that a certain genius of spirit, which Steiner called Ehrman, had in fact in the late 20th century incarnated in America and come to power in the life of rights. Ehrman was here. He was in the life of rights. And the last thing that the, that the shadow forces wanted to have happen was for American anthroposophists to wake up to the fact that what Steiner predicted about the incarnation of Ehrman had come true. So it was very important, and it remains important, and it's going to be important at the annual general meeting, which is going to come up in October in Chicago in 2010, that these subjects don't come up. So that's why I'm putting them here on, the, on my Real Anthroposophy videos, because I think it's time, you know, that these things get spoken of. I'm pretty sure that nobody's going to invite me, you know, to go talk in Chicago. Heaven help us if we have real anthroposophy spoken of in an anthroposophical society meeting. So I'm going to talk about it here. I'm going to talk about America and the life of rights and about the shadow. And in particular, Ehrman's incarnation because these are important things for people to understand. In his writings on Lucifer and Ehrman, Rudolf Steiner was very clear, we cannot be asleep when Ehrman incarnates. We cannot be asleep. And of course that's exactly what the Ehrmanic double and the Luciferic double try to do in the sense that they cause us to have to wake up. They resist our waking up. They confuse us. They urge us down other lines of thought. They trick us. They do everything that they can do to make this particular thing hard to get at. And of course one of the reasons it needs to be hard to get at, it needs to be hard, it needs to be hard, it needs to be hard, because that's the only way we will develop something in ourselves, by struggling with it. Got it? Talked about that before about the shadow. I'm going to pause and come back with some more good stuff. Huh.